Has your student finally headed to college or are they heading there soon? If so, you might be wondering what you can do in order to stay connected to them. Now, of course, ever since they've been born, you've had probably most of your time with them at any moment that you wanted. However, now with college, it's going to be a little bit different. And so staying connected might be a little bit more challenging, but that said, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. So in today's video, whether you're an empty nester or this is your first heading to school and you want to make sure that you really uh, maximize that connection, I'm going to give you some specific tips that you can use to make sure that you and your student really stay connected as they venture off into becoming an adult and pursuing their college career. Now make sure you hit subscribe. This week is a little bit different, but typically we have a strategy on how to pay for college and avoid that student loan debt. Today's we want to take care of you parents, so stick with me on this little off-topic video. But again, every single week we release a new strategy on how to secure a debt-free degree. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of the Scholarship System and Debt-Free Degree Lab, where we redefine paying for college to help families do just that and really avoid decades of student loan debt. So again, make sure you hit subscribe because we've got lots of fun strategies coming your way. Now, it can be hard when a student moves on to college. That child that you've raised for so many years now has finally moved on to the next phase of life. But of course, it might feel like they're moving on without you, but that doesn't have to be the case. That, that they still, even though they are now 18 or moving out or whatever age it is, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden they don't need you, right? So we want to actually really maximize this connection, not only to keep yourself sane and, and take care of yourself, but also to support them throughout this experience because it will be challenging and there will be times that they need you. So the first of five tips that I wanna share with you is just first to address your own feelings. It is okay if you are missing them, if you feel a little left behind, if you feel excluded. Maybe your children have been your entire life and you're not even sure who you are without them. If that's the case, it's okay. It's just important to acknowledge and address those feelings. Believe me when I say I've seen many parents that might have started off feeling like, like that and now they've really mastered that empty nest <laughs> situation. But that said, it is completely normal if that's how you're feeling. Second is to take interest in their life. If your student is willing to talk about their day, be interested, ask questions, listen, encourage them. We want to approach conversations with curiosity, not listening in order to give an opinion, right? So we want to open up the doors for conversation, not close them down with our own thoughts and opinions. This is going to be especially important once they head to college because they're going to really start feeling that independence and that autonomy. And so anything that stifles it might shut them down a little bit. Taking interest in their life might also mean going up for parents weekend. I know it. a lot of students want to show you around their campus and their dorm and introduce you to their new friends. Now, don't judge them if if their friends might be different than what you expected or maybe their room's a little messy. It's, again, pretty normal for most college students. But it is an invitation to see their new life at college. It really is the first time that most students have been on their own. They're learning so much about themselves and about relationships and, and just so many things even beyond what they're learning in the classroom. So going to parents weekend or going up there for a random weekend, homecoming, whatever it is, might be a great opportunity to do this as well. Now the third tip is to be supportive. So your student might be making choices that you don't understand or maybe one example would be they're changing their major even though you thought that you had it really figured out with them. This again is also normal and one of the things that they need is support. Maybe you can help them understand, okay, now that we're changing majors, what's the alternative career paths? What's the alternative salaries? Can you embrace it with them and really again be supportive in whatever it is that they're deciding for themselves. Trust them. You can help them find mentors. You can help them find internships, help them search for scholarships. So this is something that you can certainly be supportive in to help them release some stress around paying for college, maybe securing some funding. So there's different ways that you can be supportive without being totally uninvolved. It doesn't mean you have to be supportive in the sense that you just thumbs up everything, but these are some areas that you can really jump into while still letting them kind of command the ship, right? Now, if you are interested in scholarships, 
that might have surprised you that students that already headed to college can still apply. That is 100% the case. In fact, I received more and more scholarship money every year while I was in college to the point where I received overage checks. So if you and your student are interested in that, then I highly recommend you attend our free training on the six steps to securing scholarships. We will link to that in the description below, or you can click on it somewhere here on the screen, or you can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free training to register for that. Now our fourth suggestion is more fun, I will say, and that is to send care packages. I think a lot of students, they actually love receiving stuff from their family. You know what they love, you can figure it out, or you can go ahead and find a pre-created one even on Amazon, for example, or other websites. So there are so many different care package options out there, but this can help ease stress during exam week, or it can make them feel like they're home if they're a little bit of a little bit homesick. It can even just be a little reminder that you love them and that you're thinking of them. So care packages can be a great way to stay connected with your freshmen or really all four years while they're in college. Now comment below, what sort of things have you sent in a care package before or what kind of things do you think your student would like? Go ahead and brainstorm a few things in the comments below and read through what the other comments share because maybe you'll get some ideas. Now our fifth and final suggestion here is to use technology. Technology has made communication so much easier and open in so many different ways. And this, of course, is one of the most beneficial ways and most effective ways to stay in connection with your student once they head to college. So some examples here, maybe instead of doing a typical phone call, you can try a video call or maybe instead of doing a full committed video call you can just shoot them a text every day or here and there saying hey I'm thinking about you hope you have a great day those little sweet messages they might not even get a response but if your student is used to getting them and you stop doing them I bet you'll get a response then whether they want to admit it or not they appreciate those little moments of attention and affection. Another way to stay connected is to play games with them. There are now games where you can play with uh, another person. You can invite them and actually play against them. So, for example, we used to play Words with Friends, and I did this with my grandmother, my great aunt, my mom, my sister, my husband, boyfriend at the time. So things like that can actually be a fun way to stay connected, to know that, okay, they're doing all right, they're alive, and it can be just a fun way to still bridge that gap between you and them no matter what the distance is. Now, that being said, all of these suggestions with our ways to stay connected, but you also want to give them space to spread their wings and fly. If your student is coming home every single weekend, you might enjoy it, but I promise you it's hindering them from a true college experience. You want to stay connected with them, but also give them that push to go out in the real world and maximize this college experience. Like I said at the beginning, college is so much beyond, so much more than what they're learning in the classroom. It's about the relationships that they're going to have probably for the rest of their life. It's about the learning experiences they have in their dorm room with their roommates, with handling group projects. If they are constantly leaving campus, they will not build any kind of relationships compared to those that do not constantly leave campus. So again, as a parent, I know you're probably excited that they want to come home, that they miss you, but if you can do anything to keep them interested in school, keep them there, have them really spread their wings again and fly, that is ultimately what we're doing here, okay? We're just remember that your job as a parent is to raise them to be independent, productive members of society, not to be boomerang children and just come back to your home all the time. So I know that's not ideally what we wanna hear, but it is true, and I know that you as parents understand that. So ultimately, treating your student with respect, allowing them some room to grow and flourish while still reminding them that you are there for them and that you're thinking of them, these are all things that parents can do and it can really help you cope with them being out of the house. So I hope these suggestions helped you. Again, don't forget to register for that free training. Believe it or not, the scholarship process can be a great way to stay connected as well. You can do some of the searching, they can knock out the applications. So make sure you attend that free training. Again, you can find the link in the description or somewhere here on the screen, or you can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free training and you can register there. All right, now again, this topic was a little bit off topic from our typical videos because we primarily focus on paying for college, but I do think that you feeling supported and you having an emotional stable uh, feeling with your student heading off to college is so important as well. All right, again, this is Jocelyn with the Scholarship System. I'll see you in the next video.